Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. I'm excited to come your way once again. My name is Kojo Bento, your humble servant. And before I say anything, if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please do hit the subscription button and make sure you hit the notification button so anytime I upload a new video, you get posted. Anytime I upload a new video, you get informed that I have a new video coming up. Bless you. Welcome to the Melanated Truth. This is indeed a place welcome to the melanated truth indeed this is a place where the truth is self cold we don't have any reservations i mean if it is what it is we will say it as it is you understand i can come today and come and say something and tomorrow i find out what i said is is wrong i should have the courage and the boldness to come and say you know what i said this yesterday but what what i said was wrong this is indeed the melanated truth we are telling the truth from the original source from the original people and I know you are excited that you get to share this moment with me where we all study you set your scriptures together with me and we find out what is exactly going on in the scriptures and in the New Testament and all these lies that are being told around this don't forget Sunday I'm gonna start Sunday I'm gonna start Identity Sundays, I'm, I'm starting Identity Sundays where we just talk about our identity. We just talk about the melanin people is going to be excited. I'm super excited about it. But let's get into it. I told you from yesterday, it's hot. It's hot. The, the, the fire's on. It is on. You know what I'm saying? Questions flooding in all over. But I love it. I love it. I love it. So yesterday I was talking about um, the prophetic, according to the New Testament, the prophecy that was fulfilled in Matthew 123 in Matthew 123 that I told you that we're gonna really dissect it today and find out exactly if this is indeed a prophetic word that was supposed to be manifested in the time of Matthew's writing or uh, talking about in the time of Jesus or this is something that is already fulfilled and I'm saying it's your right you need to know somebody asked me what is all of this going to what is this going to do for me i'll tell you what this is going to do for you this is going to change your entire perspective about who you are this is going to change your entire mindset about what it is is happening in this world if you don't know you have no idea what is evolving around you but it's necessary it's so important that you know what's going on around you so that you be abraced with it with, with, with the realities of the day so let me not waste any more time. Let's go to um, 1 Matthew, 1 Matthew 23. It says, well, look, the virgin would conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And they will call him Emmanuel. And we will come back to the name Emmanuel, and I'll break that down too. Sorry, I just thought I saw something. <laughs> we'll come back to Emmanuel, and I'll break that down. But it says what a virgin would conceive. Let's even say, because this is supposedly... So, supposed to this is supposed to come from the book of the prophets right this, this, this is supposed to come from the navy right the, the, the book of the prophets so when we go into the book of the prophet we're supposed to find this exact prophecy in the book of the prophet and there's no other prophet talking about this but Isaiah I believe we all know with Isaiah 714 so it's only proper that we go to Isaiah 714 and find out what's going on there which we did yesterday I'm just recap 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 what we did yesterday so we went to Isaiah 714 realized that indeed it is saying something there but what Isaiah 714 is not saying is a virgin what Isaiah 714 was saying is that a woman will give birth a young woman a young maiden will give birth that has nothing to do with a virgin so the minute it comes down to the fact that a young maiden has to give birth then this maiden doesn't necessarily have to be a virgin then this whole concept of a virgin will conceive gets blown away or true gets thrown away thrown out of the door because the prophetic word that you are saying gave you that prophecy about a virgin birth it's not necessarily a virgin birth prophecy so then why are you still holding on to the virgin birth concept why sorry there's some some leaves are flying around so i want to make sure i know what i'm saying so why are you still holding on to this virgin birth prophecy why are you holding on to it if where you're unless you show me another place that it spoke about the virgin birth that i don't know of because when they wrote matthew the only thing they were referring to was the prophetic word in matthew in isaiah 7 14 right so as that 7 14 talks about what talks about the fact that the king ahaz was being attacked by um 
the, As the Syrians and, and the Israelites, King Ahab was being attacked by the Syrians and the Israelites, and then um, he, was, he was perplexed and he didn't know what to do. So the Most High sent Isaiah to go to him and assure him that indeed he would deliver him. So part of the assurance the Most High asked King Ahaz to ask him for a sign that shows that indeed he's going to deliver him. And Ahaz said that I I'm not going to tempt you. You know, you're the Most High. I'm not going to tempt you by sorry, asking for your sign. Then the Most High said, you know what? If you're not going to tempt me to ask me for a sign, then I am going to give you a sign. And this sign was a young woman going to conceive and give birth to a child and would call him Emmanuel, which means that the Most High was with us or God is with us. But this time, by the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he would be eating yogurt and honey. For before this child, before the child is, at, is that old, the land of these two kings you fear will not be anymore. So the reason for this prophetic word is that it was an assurance coming from the Most High that, that these two kings, the king of Syria and the king of Israel that you fear today are not, are not going to be anymore by the time the manifestation of this prophetic word comes to pass. So now the question is, was this prophetic word come to pass? And I was telling you yesterday, even if we just oppose it to the story in, in, in Matthew, right? We, then we got to see these two kings alive in the book of Matthew. Because by the time this child is old, these two kings would not be. So these two kings got to be in existence by the time this child is born. So that by the time this child is old, these kings will not be in existence. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this king is not King Herod. Because Herod died way before Jesus was conceived. So where is the king of Assyria? And where is the king of Israel trying to destroy Judah at the time Jesus was born? These are the simple things that you got to put together every time you're studying scripture. You got to do your mappings right and make sure the environment, the circumstances to which the prophetic word was said fit whatever prophecy you are trying to confirm it to. If the circumstances of the prophetic word doesn't confirm or conform to the circumstances that you are talking about, then it's not a prophetic word. Then it's not the prophetic word. You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's go further. Then the question will be, who then is this Isaiah 7, 14 talking about? Who is this virgin birth? Who, young lady, I'm, I'm correcting you now. So who is this young woman giving birth? Who is this, this young woman giving birth to? And who's going to be the mother of this child? And who's going to be the father? Remember, the mother and the father was not stated yet. So who's going to be the father to this virgin birth prophecy that is coming to pass? Then we got to dive into the scriptures, right? So I'm continuing from here. I'm we should not forget why the prophetic word came for the first time. So let's go back. So I, I, I started from Isaiah 7, 1 yesterday. I think I did. And I was telling you about um, what the prophetic word was about. And that is basically what I've summarized it, right? So the most I gave a specific period asking when this prophetic word will be fulfilled, and that is Isaiah 7, 14. That's Isaiah 7, 16, right? So let's read Isaiah. For before the child, before the child is that old, that's the time period. So the child will be conceived, and before the child is that old, these two kings will be no more. For before the child is that old, these two kings will be no more. So that, at least, we are given a time frame of the birth of this prophetic child. That this child has to be around the time of King Ahaz, uh, King Ahaz, number one. Number two, the king of Israel. And number three, the king of Syria. That is the prophetic timing of this prophetic word. These three parties have to be involved. These three nations have to be at war. To confirm this prophetic word. So when you are just opposing this prophetic word to any other word that you want to confirm to, you need to make sure that these three things are happening at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? You need to make sure these three things are happening at the same time. Let's continue. The most I also stated clearly that, also stated clearly what would happen in that day when a prophetic word is fulfilled. 
He stated clearly what would happen in that day when the prophetic word is fulfilled, right? So let's go to uh, Isaiah 7, 18 to 25. Isaiah 7, 18. He says what? In that day, the Most High would whistle for the army of the southern Egypt and for the army of Assyria. So what is going to destroy these two kings is not even this prophetic child. The prophetic child is only a sign. This prophetic child is not going to be the one that is crushing and destroying these two nations. For what, who will destroy these two nations? The king of Assyria and the king of Egypt. These two armies will come upon Samaria and Damascus to shut it down. To shut it down. So it's, this prophetic word has nothing to do with the child. The child is only a sign. This child is not come, going to come and become a king. I, I, I messed up somebody. So all this why a lot of people think that Isaiah 7, 14 is prophesying about a king that is coming. No. This child is only to be a sign that when this child is born, these two kings will, not, will, will be no more. So now you're seeing that this doesn't even qualify the story of Jesus who is supposed to be the Messiah because this child is not a Messiah. This child is only a sign. It's stated clearly that I will show you a sign and I will give you a sign. My, my, uh, Isaiah 7, 14. All right then, the Messiah himself will give you a sign. So this child is not the thing that is going to ex exact peace or implement peace or bring victory. No, it's only a sign. The two nations that are going to bring the victory is the nation Israel, the nation Egypt and the nation Assyria. You understand what I'm saying? So I continue. Assyria. They will swarm around you like flies and bees. They would come in vast hearts and hurt. They will come in vast hurt and settle in the fertile areas and also in the desolate valleys, caves, and tony places. In that day, the Mosai would hire a razor. From beyond the Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, and use it to shave off everything, your land, your crops, and your people. So when this child is born, these are the things that is supposed to happen. It is not in the records of the New Testament or the Gospels that when Jesus was born, there was any attack on the people of Judah. It's not recorded anywhere. If it is, please show me in the comments or on WhatsApp. For it is, not, it is not recorded anywhere. Whether books you think you know, or whether books um, that are popular, or whether books are not popular, it is not recorded anywhere. That when Jesus was born, these two kings were coming after the people of, Asi of Syria and, 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 and Israel. Mind you, the time Jesus was born, Israel was already scattered. Israel wasn't a nation the time Jesus was born. They were scattered, the lost tribes of the house of Israel, right? That's just Jesus' own words. So there is no way these two scenarios are referring to the same thing. But don't take my word for it. Let's go. The, another question is, did all this happen when Jesus was born? And where is that recorded? Did all this happen when Jesus was born? And where is all that recorded? Now the question still remains, has this prophetic word been fulfilled? Because if Pastor you telling me that um, this has nothing to do with Jesus because there's no setting around the era of Jesus that affirms that this prophetic word was being fulfilled in the time of Jesus, do you have any evidence that says or shows that indeed this prophetic word has been fulfilled? Yeah, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but I have it. I have evidence that says that this prophetic word was fulfilled and I can show you. You understand? I can show you. And this evidence, of course, you would have in books like the Book of War and Jubilees and all of that. But let me show you here. In the scriptures. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 8 verses 1. Isaiah 8, verses 1 to 8. Let's go to Isaiah 8, verses 1 to 8. Let's quickly go there. 
So then the Most High said to me, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then the Most High said to me, wait a minute. The Most High is speaking in Isaiah 8. Oh, maybe this has nothing to do with the prophetic word that a child will be born. So let's see if this is really talking about when a child, is, a child will be born. Isaiah 8. Then the Most High said to me, make a large signboard. And clearly write this name on it. Maher Shalal has bars. Maher Shalal has bars. I asked Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jebirakia, both known as honest men, to witness my doing this. So, Isaiah the prophet picked two witnesses. When the Most High said that I need you to pick a signboard and write this plain, that this name, plain on the signboard. Isaiah took two witnesses and said that for you, who you guys are honest men, right? So I need you to witness that indeed I am doing. Are you getting it? Let me read it again. I asked Uriah the priest and Zechariah, both known as honest men, to witness my doing this. Uh oh. Uh oh. Isaiah about to do something now. Isaiah the prophet about to do something now. Verses 3. Then I slept with my wife. Wait. As I slept with his wife, and what happened? And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Ooh. Where are those that are saying Isaiah 7 14 is talking about it? Jesus says what? Then I slept with my wife, and she conceived and bore a son. Someone say, Prophet, what, Pastor, what are you talking about? Call your bento, what are you talking about? I mean, it is normal for a man to sleep with a wife, right? And it's normal. It just, it, it can be coincidental that Isaiah spoke, slept with a wife and brought two witnesses to witness him having sex with a wife. Why would Isaiah need two witnesses to witness him having an affair with a wife because the Most High was just about to do something. This is what your pastors never told you that Isaiah 7 14 was manifested in Isaiah 8 3 when Isaiah went to sleep with a wife because the Most High needed to give Ahaz a sign that indeed he's going to be with him through thick and thin and he's not going to turn his back on him. Though the Assyrian and the Israel, Israel, Israelite army are, are about to shut down Judah. But your pastors never said that. So you've, you've, for so many years that you believe in this Jesus theory, you've so held on to this and affirmed it in your spirit that the virgin birth was prophesied. In Isaiah 7, 4, but when you go to Isaiah 7, 4, Isaiah says that the most Isaiah says, I'm giving you a sign. And Isaiah 7, Isaiah 8, 1 says what? Pick two witnesses. Write this on a signboard. Isaiah picks two witnesses. Why is he going to have intimacy with a wife? Boof, he conceived a son. Maybe, pastor, you're just making it up. Let me continue. Uh-oh, it's coming up. Already, he said in above scriptures, Write the name of this child in 8 verses 1. Don't forget this name, Ahar Shalah Hasbaz. I need you to write this name on plain sight so that everybody will know and pick two witnesses. Then as I go into the wife and the wife conceives a son, and guess what the name of this son is? You want to guess it? Then I slept with my wife and, beca and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And the most I called him, as I didn't call the most I called him, Maha Shalah Hasbaz. 
Maher Shalha Shalal Hasbaz. Wait a minute. But, but this child is not called Emmanuel. So how is this child talking about Isaiah 714? I'm coming to it. I'm here for you. You know I love you, right? I'm here for you. Don't forget it says in Isaiah 714 that when this child is born, 15, by the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he will be eating yogurt and honey. For before this child is that old, the land of the two kings will be no more. Right? Let's go back to Isaiah 8. It says what? Verses 4. For before this child is old enough to say Papa or Mama or is able to say what is right and what is wrong, right? The king of Assyria will carry away both the abundance of Damascus and the riches of Samaria. Oh, oh. The prophetic word is fulfilled. We are seeing the birth of the child that was prophesying in, prophesied in Isaiah 7, 14. And it's fulfilling every prophetic word around the child that is prophesied in Isaiah 7, 14. Uh oh And the two kings that are coming from Egypt and Assyria are taking away Damascus. Uh oh is this happening? Yes, it is happening. Before this child grows up, both Damascus and the riches of Samaria will be carried away by the king of Syria. Then the Mosiah spoke to me again and said, My care for the people of Judah is like the gentle flowing water of Shiloh. But they have rejected it. They are rejoicing over what will happen to the king risen and King Pika. Therefore, the Mosai would overwhelm them with a mighty flood from Ephraim's river. The prophetic word that was spoken in Isaiah 7 from 23 there about. And the king of Assyria in all his glory, this flood would overflow all its channels and sweep into Judah until it is in chain deep. It will spread its wings, submerging your land from one end to the other. Oh, Emmanuel. Wow. So, the name Emmanuel is fulfilled the time these two kings sweep through the land of Damascus and Samaria. Wait. It's Emma oh, Emmanuel. Was he calling a name or he was making a statement? Emmanuel is not a name. Emmanuel is a statement. Emmanuel simply means, according to the New Testament, don't let me go. According to the New Testament, according to the scripture, sorry, according to the scripture, simply means that God is with us. Right? God is with us. Let me continue and break the Emmanuel down. Huddle together, you nations, and be terrified. Listen to all you. Listen, all you distant lands, prepare for battle, but you would be crushed. Yes, prepare for battle, but you would be crushed. Call your councils of war. They will be worthless. Develop your strategies, but they will not succeed. For God is with us. Why didn't you say for Emmanuel? Because Emmanuel is not the name. It was just a statement, prophetic statement that was confirming the prophetic word that the Most High said, I'm giving you a sign. And by the time this sign is over, the king Assyria will take over the land of Damascus and Samaria. So the Emmanuel wasn't going to be the child, the name of the child. It was the statement that the, when the child, because the child is a sign, when the child is born, this child is going to be a sign. And it is said here, in Isaiah 8, 10, that, oh, your plans will not succeed for God is with us. He didn't say Emmanuel. So he said the same statement. But the most I say so. Write the sign on the board and the child's name shall be Maher Shalah Hasbaz. And Isaiah conceived the son and called 
his name by the Most High, Maher Shalah has bars. It's prophecy fulfilled. It's scripture not sweet. People are in trouble now because what they hold on to has been lies all along. Man. 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 Oh, man. <laughs> it's sweet. It's sweet. But wait, 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 wait. See, you can't even talk. You say, pass the wait a minute. Are you sure these two kings came to devour Damascus and Samaria? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. 2 Kings 16. 2 Kings 16. 2 Kings 16. Let's go to 2 Kings 16. I read from 9. 2 Kings 16, 9 says what? So the king of Assyria attacked Aramia, capital of Damascus, and led its population away as, casti as captives. Resettling them in care. He also killed King Raisin. So by the time this uh, Isaiah's child was old, King Raisin was no more. What about Samaria? Let's go to Isaiah 17, 2 Kings 17. 2 Kings 17, 5 to 6. It says what? 2 Kings 17, 5 to 6. It says, Then the king of Assyria invaded the entire land for. Three years he besieged the city of Samaria. Finally, in the ninth year, in the ninth year of King Hosea, Hosea's reign, Samaria fell. Hosea was the king of Israel. And the people of Israel were exiled to, As to Assyria. And they were settled in colonies in the Hila, along the banks of the harbor of river in Gozan, and in the cities of Medes. So, Samaria was also taken by the king of Assyria. Is prophecy fulfilled? It's pro no, I, I want to know, is prophecy fulfilled? There's another thing that Christians say all the time and they don't even know that it's the scriptures. Christians say this thing all the time. They don't even know it's not a New Testament thing. It's, it was, was said in the scriptures. They assume that automatically it's talking about the birth of Jesus. So I'm going to show you this thing pretty shortly. Isaiah 9 says what? Let me read Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9 says what? Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair would not go on forever. Remember, this is still coming from Isaiah 8, right? I, I, I took a jump. I took a jump. But there are so many things there that you should learn and it will help you. But I, I jumped because I want to show you something, right? Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair would not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali and Naphtali would be humbled. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies around, along the road, runs between Judah and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. This is scripture, not the New Testament. A lot of people think this is talking about the New Testament. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. They will see a great light. For those who live in the land of the deep darkness, a light will shine. And you would enlarge the nation of Israel. And its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as the people rejoice at the harvest. And like warriors dividing the plunder. For you would break the yoke of, the, of their slavery. And lift their heavy burden from their shoulders. And you will break the oppressor's rod. You, as you did when you destroyed the armies of Midian. The boot of the warrior and the uniforms of the blood stained by war will be burned. Will be burned. They will be fueled for fire. For a child is born to us and a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called the wonder of a counselor. Everlasting, 
the wonder of a counselor, of the everlasting father, prince of peace. His government and its peace would never end. And he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. And a passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's army would make this happen. People read this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The minute you see this. I, I want to read this. I want to read this. I want to read this. From, from, from the scriptures. Isaiah. Because this is where. When, let, let, let me show you where your version, what your version would read. For a child is born to us. And a son is given to us. The government will rest upon his shoulders. And he would be called. And he will be called the wonderful. So this is where you get it confused in your scriptures, right? In your verses. He says, and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God. So you think he will be called. It means that this child is going to be called a wonderful counselor. And a mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And his government. So because you hear he will be called a wonderful counselor and all of that. You are thinking this child is going to be called a wonderful counselor. It means this child is going to be called the most high. So it means this child is the one going to manifest in the flesh. Then they say this is a Bible prophecy in Jesus Christ. But what you are reading is an altered version of the truth. Let me read the Tanakh for you. The Tanakh is the original version, right? That the King James copied the truth from. Or King James copied the scriptures from. It was even Tendo. Tendo did his work, right? Tendo did his work and King James killed. Who? I didn't say that. Sorry. I didn't say King James killed anybody for his translation. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Let me read, let me read what it is for you exactly. Isaiah 9.6 where you got it wrong because your, your Bible is this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government, the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called the wonder of the counselor. Not he will be called the wonderful counselor. As your version say. it says his name will be called the wonder of the counselor. What does it mean? He will be given a title. He is the wonder of the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father. Are you getting the beauty of it? So he will be called the wonder of the counselor. So he is the counselor, the almost side. Not anybody coming down. Wait, 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 pastor. Are you saying this is not a prophecy of Jesus? No, I'm saying it's not. This is not about Jesus. As a matter of fact, this is speaking about Hezekiah. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Hezekiah, the son of King Ahaz. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you doing this to me, Pastor? Are you not reading this for yourself? Do you need me to read it again? I've said it about three times already. You still didn't get it? For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called... You're still not getting it. Unto us a child is born. Is born. Not will be born. It's already born. This child is born. So he's just, the prophet is just making an announcement. That, hallelujah. A child is born unto us. A son is given to us. The government will rest upon the shoulders of this son. And he will be called a wonder of the counselor. The judge established. The judge established by the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So, so Ezekiah was the one they called the prince of peace. Not Jesus. Jesus wasn't called. There's not a single prophecy called, saying Jesus will be called the prince of peace. Hezekiah was the one that was called the prince of peace. So you, when you read your version, it says so. And he will be called the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. No! Unto as a child is born, he will be called the wonder of the counselor, the judge established by the mighty everlasting father, the prince of peace, of the increase of his government. Peace would be no end. There will, peace 
and peace, there will be no end to his, his, his peace upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. So this person is going to sit upon the throne of David and is going to reign over David's kingdom. To order it and to establish it. Jesus does not sit on the throne of David. How can you even think this is talking about Jesus? And with justice from that time and forever after, the zeal of Yahweh will see to it to perform. Meaning the armies of Yahweh of hosts, the, the Most High, will see that this prophetic... Let's see if this was fulfilled. Let's see. Let's see if this was fulfilled, okay? How, how are you knowing, Pastor, that this is exactly talking about? I, 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 this is exactly talking about uh, Isaac, uh, Hezekiah. What are you saying, Pastor? Let, let, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. You know I got you like that. Let's read. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's look at what brought this prophetic word in the first place. This was when the king of Assyria was defying, was defying the name of the Most High. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. 24 to 27. Isaiah 14, 24 to 27. Right? It says what? The Most High of Heaven's army has sworn this oath. Yah of Heaven's army, he has sworn this oath. It would happen as I have planned. It will be as I have decided. I would break the Assyrians. When they are in Israel. And I will trample them. On my mountain. My people will no longer be their slaves. Nor bow down under their heavy loads. If I have planned for the whole earth. I have a hand of judgment upon all nations. Yah of heaven's army has spoken. Who can change his plans? When he has raised his hands. The 28 says what? This message came to me the year King Ahaz died. So this prophetic word that a Mosai was given to Isaiah to declare to the people of Israel came at the time that King Ahaz died. And when Ahaz died, his son Hezekiah was the one that took over. And when Hezekiah took over when he was about 20 years old, then Isaiah had this prophetic word. So Isaiah came to Hezekiah. And told Hezekiah that this is the assurance of the Most High telling you that you are going to destroy the Assyrian army. Going to destroy the Assyrian army. Let, 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 let's talk about it again. Let, uh, uh, let, let's go. The Most High reveals how he will destroy this Assyrian army in Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. Let's go to Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. From 6 to 7. Isaiah 37, showing you that Isaiah 9 says has nothing to do with the Jesus unto us a child. He said a child is born. You are saying you are still thinking about the future. A child is born. In Isaiah's time, you are still thinking English. A child is born. Isaiah 37, 6 to 7 says what? And the prophet replied, Say to your master, this is what the most high, do not be disturbed by the blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him. And the king received a message that he is indeed at home. So he would return to his land when I have killed, when I have him killed with a sword. This is the plan. That a Mosai was going to take against the king of Assyria. So soon after king of the uh, king of Assyria was led, was leading an army to fight against him before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah and Joshua. So this the Assyrian army was coming after Hezekiah, and the Mosai promised Hezekiah, "Listen, I'm going to make you win this battle, Hezekiah. I'm going to make you win this battle." Let's look at text seven. 33 to 35. The same place. 33 to 35. Isaiah 37, 33 to 35. It says, And this is what the Most High says about the king of Assyria. His army would not enter into Jerusalem. They would not, 
They will not even shoot an arrow at it. They will not march outside its gates with their shields, nor build banks of it against its walls. The king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. He will not enter this city, says Yahweh most, for my own honor and for my sake of David. Remember the promise was spoken of David, right? And David's throne. He says, what? for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David, I will defend this city and protect it. Moses said to Ezekiah, I will defend this city and protect it. Second Kings. This is where the Most High delivered the city Jerusalem. Second Kings. Second Kings. Second Kings, let's look at. Let's look at 19. 35 to 37. 19, 35 to 37. Second Kings 19, 35 to 37. It says what? That night, a Malak of the Most High went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. When the surviving Assyrian woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. Then the king of Assyria broke camp and returned to his own land and went home to his capital of Nineveh and stayed there. One day while he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nisroch, his son, his sons killed him with their own sword. Then they escaped to the land Ararat. And another son became the king of Assyria. So just as the Most High promised Hezekiah, says what? I am going to give you this victory. I'm going to make sure you win this thing. I'm going to make sure you have this victory. And the Most High delivers. So this prophecy of Isaiah 9, 6 was, was manifested or was, was fulfilled in Isaiah 19 from 35. But pastor, all of this said, where does it say Hezekiah is the, is the, king, is the prince of peace? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh. Let's go to Isaiah 37. Second Chronicles, sorry, let's go to Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles 32 says what? 32, I read from 21. Second Chronicles 32 from 21, it says what? 21 says, let me read it. Let me. And the Most High sent a Malak who destroyed the Assyrian army with all its commands and officers who was forced to return to home, return to their home in disgrace to his own land. And it goes on to say that. Right? And now let's see the prophetic word that said that indeed Hezekiah is the prince of peace. Indeed, Hezekiah is the prince of peace. Prince of peace. Prince of peace. Hmm? You ready? You ready? You ready? Isaiah. Let, let, let me even go um, Second Chronicles 32 23 it says what Second Chronicles 32 23 from then on King Hezekiah became highly respected among all the surrounding nations and many gifts from the most and many gifts for the most high arrived at Jerusalem and what no let me go to 22 this is how the most high had rescued this is how the most high rescued the people of Jerusalem from the king of Assyria and from all the others who threatened them. So there was peace throughout the land. So there was peace throughout the land. So this is how the Mosai gave Hezekiah peace on every side. On every side. So the Mosai gave Hezekiah peace on every side. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 39. Isaiah 39. So, so Hezekiah ruled in peace. Let's go to Isaiah 39. 5 to 8. My time is up. My time is up. I'm rushing now. Isaiah 39 from 5 to 8. 5 to 8. Isaiah 39, 5 to 8. Says what? Isaiah 39, 5 to 8. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, listen to this message from the most high of heavens of hosts from Yahweh. The time is coming when everything in your palace 
And all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Most High. Some of your own very sons will be taken into exile. They would become Enoch's who would serve in the palace of the Babylon king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Mosai is good. For the king was thinking at least there would be peace and security during my lifetime. At least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. If you want to find out who was the king of peace, the prince of peace in the history of the Israelites, I have just given him the answer. His name is Hezekiah because he reigned in peace like nobody has ever seen in the nation or in the city of Jerusalem. So Isaiah 9 says the prince of peace, it was talking about Hezekiah and not the Jesus Christ. Not the Jesus Christ by Hezekiah. My time is up. Sorry, I, 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 I couldn't cover a lot of grounds, but at least I've given you the evidences and the manifestations of the prophetic words that Isaiah spoke about and it's being fulfilled in the scriptures. Have a great evening, please. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you love it. Make sure you share it. Make sure you hit the notification button. Make sure we grow. Let's grow together, okay? So that everybody you know would also come to the knowledge of the truth. Stay blessed. I love you. I'll see you same time tomorrow as we continue to unveil the prophetic, the so-called prophetic statements that are in the New Testament that are not true. I love you. I'll see you same time tomorrow. Stay blessed.